We did it again. With the gauntlet coming soon, I've been tweaking the build that I used to become the first level 100 rogue of the season. And it is truly the final form of rogue. The reason being, it is extremely fast and where the old builds seem to lack in the single target damage. I know some people were saying that they felt that they didn't hit hard enough in single target. Well, without changing a single skill or paragon point, this is what the build can do single target. Not only that, but it completely clears a screen of a tier 100 uh, sigil uh, without, again, changing a single skill or paragon point. So how can I have it all? How can I one shot a P4 Duriel and clear entire screens with the click of the button while constantly resetting my cooldown and dashing from enemy to enemy? This is the epitome of rogues and exactly what I was picturing uh, when preparing the rogue for the gauntlet that's coming up soon. Just a few housekeeping items. I am recording this video at 1 a.m. before leaving for my trip. I wanted to make sure I got it out there before I went. Um, we're not sure when the gauntlet is coming, so information might change as, as that's coming out, but I wanted to make sure I got this out there. Everyone's been asking, what build am I using right now? And this is it. So I'm gonna show you exactly what gear I'm using. I'm gonna explain every piece of gear and why I'm using it and the stats that I'm using on the gear. I'm gonna go through the skills, a little bit of the Paragon board, and then show you a full clear tier 100 vault. And I'm gonna explain the skill rotations as we do it. Also, I'll show you exactly what we do to one shot a player's for Duriel. So let's just go ahead and start right off with the gear. We're using God Slayer Crown. Uh, this is really good because we are using uh, stun with our shadow imbuement. Uh, so we are stunning a lot, and what this is doing is pulling everything in, dealing an additional 60% damage, and just, it, it's really good utility, and it just helps clear the entire screen. It's also really helpful for that single target boss damage, and you'll see God Slayer Crown is a big part of how we one-shot Doriel. Uh, if you have a Shaco, you can use a Shaco instead. Uh, for the armor, we're using the Juggernaut Aspect on an armor with three damage reductions and one armor mod. Now, for the Gauntlet, we may not need that total armor mod if it's only like a tier 70 dungeon. I'm using it because I use this build for everything. I clear tier 100s and I one shot Duriel. I, you know, I, I don't want to be swapping a ton of gear. Uh, so I have armor on my, my plate with the three damage reductions. If we end up not needing an armor roll, then we could always change that to max life. Here on the gloves, you want to have attack speed, crit chance, rapid fire, and pen shot. These would be better if they had plus four pen shot. Well, I don't, I haven't found them yet, but, um, in the planner, you're going to see all of the ideal affixes. This is just the gear that I have. It's going to be pretty close to the planner, but the planner is going to be the ideal stuff. So make sure you check it out. It's in the, the description link and it's going to be a max roll planner. So just make sure you are looking at the gear on the character itself. There's a lot of variants. So all the gear on the side is gear used for all the different variants. The gear that they're equipped to the character is the gear that I'm using for this variant. I call it the speed demon. Uh, on the pants, we have more damage reduction, life, and we're using resistant assailant. This is how we are constantly resetting our cooldown on shadow imbuement. So we have nearly 100% uptime on shadow imbuement. Plus, our concealment is what we're using to escape CC. So we're not using shadow step on this build, but concealment is constantly giving us unstoppable, which uh, helps us to break out of CC, and then it's also reducing our Shadow Imbuement cooldown with the help of the Night Stalker Glyph. But we'll talk about that when we get to the Paragon board. Uh, quickening Fogs, just to get around really quick. <laughs> this is the Speed Demon build. This is for the Gauntlet. We want to be dashing and looking for those big packs of mobs and just mowing them down with one shot. So anything to help speed that up, we're all for. You're going to run Try Resist here so that you can make sure you have max all res. Uh, on the crossbow, we're using edge masters. You nearly always have full uh, energy with the rotation that we're using, which is about three punctures to one, either rapid fire or penetrating shot. So this is a huge damage boost. We're putting on our crossbow to get twice the effect. Uh, Icy alchemist on the amulet. Uh, and this is just to get a, a really nice 
you know, AOE chill and uh, cold damage on top of everything else when we're using our shadow imbuement since nearly everything we shoot is shadow imbued uh, we're going to get a ton of these icy alchemist procs circle so this is a uh, trick shot this is uh, for any penetrating shot build uh, you're going to want to run trick shot i forgot to mention the gloves is rapid aspect um, this is so that we can build our combo points faster uh, trick shot is uh, what you're going to want to clear those full screens. If you're doing a boss build, you really don't need trick shot. So if you wanted to swap out, you know, intercom here for trick shot, you can do that. Uh, you really don't need it for bossing specifically. We use it here. The ring, you want crit chance, crit damage, obviously. Max life is great on the ring now that max life scales with your percentage life. And uh, you'll notice the jewels here. We just fill in where our res are missing. So you notice I don't have poison res on the boots. I put emeralds here. If you didn't have shadow res, you could put amethysts. You know, you're just evening out your res with the sockets that you have available in your jewelry. And then starless skies. But again, if you don't have starless skies, you, you do not need uber uniques for this build at all. You could use accelerating aspect here if you don't have starless skies. So the planner will have both options. Uh, expectant, you're going to want on any build. Uh, this works really well with our rotation of, you know, three punctures to one pen shot. So we're, you know, building up this big damage boost thanks to expectant. And, uh, and yeah, these are, these are good affixes. So <laughs> all stats, dex, crit strike damage, and core. That, that is what you want. Uh, condemnation is just so good for a combo points build, 40% multiplicative damage. But the stats on it themselves are also really good. Basic attack speed is going to build up your combo points quicker. Crit strike damage is huge this season with the precision key passive. Core skill damage as well. So a lot of really good stuff. Plus the affix itself on Condemnation is, is really, really good. You'll see here on the crossbow, we also have the same affixes that we have on our sword. All stats, dexterity, crit strike damage, and core. Uh, specialization, obviously, is combo points. And let's look at the skill tree. Let me make sure my head's not too big. Uh, puncture, obviously fundamental puncture. This is to maintain uptime on vulnerable when our exploit uh, runs off, which is a Paragon Glyph we're using. We'll go over that. Uh, siphoning Strike gives us a little bit of life, which is nice to have. Here we just put um, five points into Rapid Fire. Now the improved Rapid Fire is, you know, this stuff's like bugged, so we don't, really uh, use it because it is canceling out our uh, precision key passive would really be great if blizzard could fix that before you know this new leaderboard that they're introducing uh, also don't really need this increased crit strike chance um, for enhanced rapid fire because the precision key passive is giving us a guaranteed crit strike so whenever we're shooting rapid fire we're going to have max precision so you, you don't really need the extra uh, crit chance there. Here uh, we go to advance because we're nearly all we're, we're always shooting pen shot with a full uh, energy and this gives us some extra uh, slow and knockdown on elites which is cool but we really don't need it again because it's going to be a guaranteed crit. Uh, here we go weapon mastery for that increased crit strike damage. Crit strike damage is great to have though so we want to max out our weapon mastery we also have it on our amulet. Uh, one point in dash to get around. So we can zoom. Uh, concealment, I maxed out concealment here just to get the cooldown as low as possible. Uh, and then I actually have it on my pants. I, I don't recommend that. Uh, if you have a Shaco, it'll be at level nine anyway. Um, I'm still rolling my pants. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend rolling concealment on, on your pants. You only need five points here. Uh, here, exploit and malice is just more damage. You're going to see a bit of a theme with my Paragon board, at least, is a lot of damage to healthy, and that's guaranteeing those one shots on all of those packs and the bosses. Uh, Shadow Crush, I put a couple points into Shadow Crush here just so I can get those stuns with my Shadow Imbuement, and that's, you know, proccing my God Slayer crown very, very often. And then we're going Mixed Shadow Imbuement um, because we are dealing a lot of non-physical damage and uh, when we apply our shadow imbue it's just going to take a lot more damage from stuff like the icy alchemist proc and and so forth you could put points into frigid finesse here but it's not really helping with the boss killing so i kind of tried to pick things that were well rounded so these work with you know any content that you want to do 
you'll notice here that I have points into Shadow Clone, even though I am not using it. It is not on my skill bar right now. Uh, but if you noticed in the boss kill, I was using it. So when I go to kill bosses, if you want to just one shot the boss, you know, you don't have to do this. Uh, but you just throw the Shadow Clone on instead of Concealment, and that's it. You know, you, you put on your, your boss killing items, which are Beast Falls, because literally the Beast just falls. Um, Tybalt's Will and Banish Lord's Talisman. Uh, that is all you need to do, and you are now a one-shot hit rogue. You can one-shot carry all your friends, show the barbs up that, you know, you one-shot P4 Doriel and, uh, and, you know, have a good time farming with that. But you know for anything else you don't really need those and you can still kill Duriel just fine you could probably one shot him solo uh without those items uh but this this build is meant for uh, for everything so um especially in the gauntlet if we end up having to fight a really strong boss at the end guess what just throw him on and boom you one shot anything in the game malthus butcher whatever it is here innervation to get some energy uh sustain uh impetus because we are you know, constantly moving around, especially with concealment, you can kind of place yourself really strategically since we, it's, it's so fun to use this skill, I, I, I'll tell you. Uh, you can you know, move around, position yourself perfectly for that pen shot kill to line it up and uh, you're constantly getting um, impetus up. So I, I've really in, started enjoying this, this passive here. Uh, haste, uh, it's just great overall. Movement speed, energy regen, and then precision key passive. This is the bread and butter of the build. Uh, you obviously want to stack as much crit strike damage as possible with this key passive, and we are constantly getting our stacks up to six with just three or four punctures. So, really great. The Paragon board. All right. So, we're running one, two, three, four, five, six boards, but five glyphs. Uh, the first glyph is canny. This is just, uh, we're running this for damage plus a multiplicative damage boost, uh, especially on things that don't get one shot or we, you know, are um, attacking them um, a couple times. Uh, we have the uh, multiplicative damage boost from the secondary effect here plus a lot of additive damage. Um, grabbing res, damage, a bunch of good stuff here. Uh, then going up to the cheap shot board and getting exploit here. Exploit's going to be really important to apply that first vulnerable shot to everything that you hit. And you really don't have to worry about applying it again because everything's going to die. For those bosses, um, you know, that may take more than one shot. Uh, you have puncture for that to make sure that they are constantly vulnerable anyway. But for exploit, that's going to take care of nearly everything else you'll see we get a lot of damage to healthy, right? This is so we get those one shots. It's never not healthy. If it just dies in one shot, it goes from healthy to dead, just like that. So we've got a lot of damage to healthy. You'll notice it over here as well in our no witness board where we go to next. A lot of damage to healthy, a lot of crit strike damage on this board as well. So we wanna make sure we grab all that. And then we're putting combat in here now. And I know I usually have what efficacy on this board, but there's just a lot of intelligence nodes and we want to get as much intelligence around the combat glyph as possible so we can get that huge critical strike damage. Um, that is going to be so massive, massive, massive for our precision key passive. So getting all of that intelligence is really great. You really don't need all the life like they, they were not fighting AOZ. Uh, so really, there's nothing that gives us much trouble. You saw me or you will see. Uh, me absolutely shredding this tier 100 nightmare dungeon. That's the hardest content in the game. And I I'm not missing the extra life here. So I put combat in on the uh, no witness board. Uh, then we move over to the cunning stratagem board. Cunning stratagem, we are going to come and pick up this legendary node. It gives us a lot more lucky hit chance on our pen shot. Plus um, it also is giving us an extra um, attack arrow on our rapid fire to just give us some more damage so we're gonna go go down and grab the cunning stratagem on the way we're gonna grab a bunch of you know res armor good stuff there's a lot of core skill damage on this board which is the main reason uh that that i'm taking it as well and we are boosting that core skill damage with versatility so you'll see um we get you know 31 percent boosted core skill damage just from the versatility node plus a bunch of stats plus we get the secondary effect which is a uh, multiplicative 
damage boost for our non-basic and non-core skills, which Shadow and View counts as. Just like Poison and View counted as before. Versatility, great, Glyph. Uh, we're going to go then to the Tricks of the Trade board where we're going to pick up a bunch more Crit Strike damage here with Havoc. Uh, you'll see a bunch of Crit Strike... Uh, sorry, Crit Strike damage yeah, here and grab all that. Uh, plus, there's a lot of damage to Elite on this board. So we're going to just grab that because it's there and throw in our Night Stalker Glyph. This is how we are constantly resetting our Imbuement. So... Night Stalker, every time we enter stealth, we reduce the cooldown by four seconds on Shadow and Bue. This is saying every time we kill an elite, our concealment cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds. Well, the cooldown on it is only, you know, 13 seconds anyway. So that's nearly the entire cooldown gets reduced. So we can instantly use our concealment again, and we are entering stealth and then reducing our cooldown of shadow imbuement so that's the cycle that feeds on itself you figure you have two shadow imbuements if you kill two elites that's two more concealments and your 11 second shadow imbuement cooldown is now back to nothing and you can reset the cycle so you'll notice i nearly have 100 percent uptime in this nightmare 100 dungeon on shadow imbuement which is going to be very important for the gauntlet and then for the last um board we are just using the eldritch bounty board and we're just going for that legendary node to get an extra 20 percent damage our construct so uh we're, we're using flash of adrenaline and tempest tempest is going to give us a lot of fortify and the safeguard is going to basically always be up uh i don't have any of the unique stones but if i did you could put genesis on flash of adrenaline in place of what gripping and then you could put uh ever night on you, where mockery support is to get you know plus four all, all skills basically always right so um that's what i would replace if i had them replace mockery and gripping with genesis and evernight but these work pretty well too and flash of adrenaline is just going to give you a huge damage boost this is reducing the cooldown so we get it more often this is increasing the duration so that we have it up more and gripping is uh, pulling enemies in, which is really nice for penetrating shot. And then mockery is taunting as well. So these are just really good utility until we get Evernight and Genesis. Fortify is helping with our life and Safeguard is helping with our survivability as well. So let's talk about the swap for Uber Durial. Uh, you'll notice we put on Tybalt's Will, Banished Lord's Talisman, and Beastfall Boots. Now the rotation for this is very, very simple. Uh, you don't have to, you're, like, you're not only going to kill Durial on a Tuesday when the sun is out and all of your damage lines up perfectly. That, that, you don't have to worry about that. The only thing you need is to use get your 300 resource spent so that your banished lord's talisman is active basically uh then all you have to do is you make sure your shadow imbuement is up like anything use your shadow clone and just pop them with rapid fire that is it uh nothing more than that it's incredibly simple and you will just one shot uber durial or any other bosses you know, and if, if you're not able to do it, just, just make sure, like, you know, your Godslayer crown is only active for three seconds. It's important. Expectant only lasts for five seconds. So there, there's there's some timing involved, but, I mean, you these get activated just in the course of normal playing. So, I mean, it, it, it shouldn't be too difficult to have your buffs all active at the same time. And then Beastfall Boots, you want to make sure, since you're using energy, that your energy is as high as possible. Max energy as a stat is going to give you a ton of uh, damage with your Beastfall Boots. So that's kind of where Tybalt comes in with resource. We have some energy on our ring, and the Beastfall Boots themselves give you energy. So then for every point of energy, you get um, additional multiplicative damage boost with Beastfall. <laughs> I don't even have a very good roll. I could be doing 50% more damage if I just had a better roll on these Beastfall Boots, and I still one-shot Durial. So the build is insane. Um, you, and you, you don't need to do any crazy setups to one-shot anything in the game. I'm going to quickly go over the skill rotation in this tier 100 vault. It's pretty simple and straightforward. This is a very easy build to pilot, um, and it's it's just, it, it works really well. It's very fluid, and it's so fast. I can't wait to get into the gauntlet with it. So you go in, and you know, you're just going to be constantly building up your combo points, and that is also going to be building up your precision key passive, and then you're going to use a shadow imbued penetrating shot to clear all of your density. If 
for at whatever reason, the penetrating shot doesn't kill everything on the screen. You have your rapid fire skill to kill what, whatever's left. Uh, you want to make sure that you're killing the elites. I did do a full clear here so that you could see an example of what uh, I think is a good representation of what the gauntlet might look like. I think everything in the gauntlet is going to be much, much weaker than a tier 100 nightmare dungeon, potentially 30 levels lower uh, from what we're hearing. Uh, so this just means that there really won't be anything left. And the rapid fire is mainly just for whatever boss we might find at the end of the gauntlet. But uh, a lot of these uh, vault videos, just everyone's just rushing to the end of the room. But I, I wanted to show you what a full clear looks like because we're going to be full clearing those gauntlets um, in, in order to get you know a good time. And, and your, your build really needs to be able to clear a lot of density, but also have that insane single target, right? And so we've we've proven the single target with those uber durial one shots, uh, and now this is to show you how it does at clearing density, and where the previous build that I used didn't have that great uptime on shadow imbue, we've been able to maintain the same damage, uh, but just have nearly 100% uptime on our shadow imbuement, which is really, really cool. So you'll see it's just constantly resetting. We, we have a lot of concealment to break CC, and we have a lot of shadow imbuement to just kill everything. Our dash with quickening fog, we're, we're dashing around. It's nice to dash like into packs, right? Uh, you don't, you don't want to get yourself, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew, uh, but it is really good because you get a, a nice reduction of your cooldown on... Uh, dash you can keep moving around as fast as possible and really i say full clear but I, I'm, I'm trying to kill every elite right and and it's beneficial to kill elites on this build which is why rapid fire or the death beam is so important you really want to make sure that you're killing the elites and not leaving them behind because they're going to give you probably progression in the gauntlet but it's also basically resetting your cooldown on concealment. Every one of these packs has three of them, so we're able to get our concealment back every time we kill one of these packs. So I'm, I'm stopping and killing just about everything I come across in this vault, and it's still going very, very quickly. Um, so we get to the final room. We can just stand in a corner, shoot our <laughs> penetrating shot, clear the entire screen, and it's as simple as that. So I hope you like the build. Um, again, I'm going to be away for a week or two, so I'm not sure when the gauntlet is coming out. If you don't hear from me right when it comes out, uh, it's because I'm still on vacation. But, uh, when I get back and I'll, I'll be answering any questions, um, you know, whenever I can, but, uh, when I get back, look forward to some gauntlet pushes. We're going to be pushing the leaderboard with this build and, uh, really excited to see how everything shapes out. So I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.